Christine Deschler and I, as chair of the Arlington Finance Committee, I'm calling the October 17th, 2023 meeting of the committee to order. First, I want to confirm attendance of members and that they can all hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, starting with Jordan. Here. Shane. Here. Jennifer. Here. Sophie. Here. Brian's not here. Carolyn. Here. Rebecca. Here. Josh. Grant. Here. Charlie. Here. John. Here. Daryl. Here. Annie. Here. Elle Jones. Here. Topher. Here. Peggy. Here. Al Tosti. Here. Dean. Not here. Dave McKenna. Here. And Tara Bradley. Here. Um, all right. Uh, on March 29th, 2023, Governor Healy signed into law a supplemental budget bill, which, among other things, extends the temporary provisions of the open meeting law to March 31st, 2025. This further extension allows public bodies to continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the body physically present at a meeting location so long as adequate alternative access to the deliberations of the meeting is provided to the public. Ensuring public access does not ensure public comment or public participation. This meeting will not feature public comment. Those wishing to provide comments may do so by emailing our executive secretary, Tara Bradley at tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. This meeting is being recorded and some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care enough to screen share your computer for those um, attending remotely. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Um, I will recognize members wishing to speak um, whose hand is raised by calling upon them. Please hold until your name is called. For those attending remotely, remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. All please remember to speak clearly and in a way that generates accurate minutes. Um, we are, what we, Okay, we're going to move on to um, agenda item number three, reconsideration of the town meeting warrant article, uh, article number two. Um, because of um, the language on the ballot, um, the $400,000 appropriation that we were expecting to put into the schools, the FY24 budget cannot happen. And Alex, I will turn it over to you for a brief explanation sure. um, as to why we need to reconsider and revote our two. Great. Um, had we taken the vote as it was sort of uh, presented at town meeting, it would have been null and void anyways. The, the ballot uh, as written was written as such that it would not take effect until fiscal year 25, um, when all along the anticipated plan was for this to happen in 2024, uh, fiscal 24. So. Um, we are going to need to push for a uh, no action on this ballot and uh, with the understanding of the um, override money the schools were anticipating and were previously supported to be funded via some other avenue at the Springtown meeting. Um, that is the brief explanation. Um, financially, this uh, we've had a number of things come into focus in the last probably about week and a half or two weeks that have really um, made the, our position. It's not really going to have a, a detrimental impact um, on our financial position through the end of this uh, anticipated override period through FY26. Um, we had projected in the long range planning a roughly $17 million deficit in FY27 um, without the benefit of this override money, we're projecting a, a deficit of around 17 million in 27 with a smaller deficit in 26 in front of it. Um, that's sort of the brief, that's the brief. Okay, anyone have any questions as to what we need to do tonight? And um, I uh, will say that once we take, um, we deal with what we have to do tonight, then we can have, continue the conversation as to anything further about what we might do um, in the next, uh, in this one. Any questions on um, reconsidering, reconsideration of Article 2? I have a question, Christine. Jane? I'm sorry. Thank you, Alex. <clears throat> Can you just explain that to me one more time? So the vote that the select board took was for FY25. And, and where does it say that? Because I'm just looking at Article 2 right now, which says FY24. So 
So right. I make sure I'm looking in the right place. You're looking in the wrong place. The vote okay. is on the ballot okay. on the ballot language that is going to okay. go to the vote uh, in November at the special election. Okay, and so that's what the select board approved that they they approved that language. That is correct. Okay, and so that was for FY twenty five. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other sure. questions by anyone? Do I have a motion to reconsider and for a no action vote? So moved. Second. All right. All right. What I'll do now is I'm going to ask for hands raised. And then I'm gonna go through the roll call. All right, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Any opposed? It is unanimous. All right, I will go through the, the roll call now. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Brian's not here. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Al? Tosti? Yes. Um, is not here. Dave McKenna? Yes. You missed out. You missed, uh, this Did I yes. miss you? <laughs> All right. I'm Al Jones. All right. Yes. Right. Um, what I, I should have um, pointed out that. Um, Alex left the room to give the okay for the supplemental FinCon report to be distributed, which we have here. That's pretty basic. We we considered and voted no action. Um, all right. Now, with that done, um, what questions do people have for Alex about uh, what to do, what the view is, what the what's going on, what we can do, what the projections are, all of the above. Annie. Okay, so if I understand correctly, what this means is that we are collecting less money in this override because we are not raising taxes in 2024, we're raising them in 2025. Correct. And therefore, you're thinking by 2026, we have some kind of a deficit. Do we know how big that deficit So it, it depends. If the override does pass, yeah. we will not have a, we're not projecting a deficit in 2026. Okay. Um, if the override does pass, so say it takes effect in FY25, as mm -hmm. we anticipate, yep. if it passes, uh, we'll be facing a $15 million deficit in FY27. Okay. Right? So we're free and clear through 26. Right. Um, to give a little context to that, mm -hmm. when the long range planning committee, sort of how they narrowed in on a three year override for $7 million, mm -hmm. which is roughly 5% mm -hmm. of the levy. Um, the projections showed just under seventeen million dollars being our twenty seven FY twenty seven deficit in that year. So, uh, the conditions on the ground have um, even with this impacting FY twenty five instead of twenty four, um, the the position has um, become a little better okay. um, in that sense. All right, and, um, the, and this is for a number of different reasons, which we I'm sure we'll get into in a minute. So, and and in terms of the schools. The money that they had requested for their strategic plan doesn't change except for the $400,000? Right. So um, that doesn't change. It's not being appropriated today um, because right. of the language on the ballot. And so um, there was no way to appropriate that without right. a funding source. Um, and so that will be considered in the future at a future okay. town meeting, um, whether that's spring and what funding source, that is uh, all of her question. For FY24. Correct. Okay. But FY 25, 7 million kicks in. Carry the plan, plan forward. Exactly. Forward. Right. And so that, that included $3.1 million in funding, additional funding for 25, 1.7 for 26, 600 for 27, and 300 for 28. Got it. I just want to confirm, Alex. Um, to confirm the schools can't spend the 400 because they don't have the right right percent. so they're not their budget is not being increased by four hundred thousand dollars right. as of so, tonight right. no. i just want to clarify so fiscal uh, obviously 24 is balanced fiscal 25 we're okay right fiscal 26 we're okay if the override passes if, 50 26 is okay if the override does not pass in 26 we're looking at a small deficit uh which candidly will 
I think I would imagine because of our conservative forecasting that's built into this model that that deficit will close itself as well. Can't so, predict the future, but so yeah. fiscal twenty seven is that's the year. Yeah. Right. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Please. So the uh, deficit, this uh, reduced deficit in fiscal twenty six, which you said is small, and and may be corrected. Does that include the increased spending for the school department? If the override doesn't pass, it does not include that. Okay. Right, so that, that that's contingent funding. So that wouldn't include any, mm -hmm. if the override doesn't pass, all of the, the these school increases. town and school funding is Right, included. they just go away. Okay. And then we're looking at how to balance the budget in different ways. You know what, how the school budget is doing right now versus plan? I don't. We're still early in the year. They're carrying a number of vacancies right now, so they're likely underspending to um, to their year to date. Uh, we're just over a quarter of the way through the fiscal year. They're likely um, underspending to that uh, just over a quarter of the way um, because of the vacancies they're carrying. What about the town side? We are also in a similar position, underspending. So uh, the the ripple effect of that is to likely be generating more free cash. Um, this is one of the major reasons why we're in a, the strong sort of financial position we're in. We just last week certified a record free cash number of a little over $18 million. So you guys on the, 18, oh, yeah. you guys on this wow. committee know that half <laughs> that will be turned into a funding source for future fiscal years. It also marginally dragged up our trailing 10 year average, which is projected into the five year long range plan. Um, so does that make sense? The chair. Charlie. So uh, where did the 18 million, I mean, normally we're 11 to 13 million or something like that. Where did the extra five or 6 million free cash come from? Right. So the biggest, the biggest sources were, um, were we had a major, we had a huge outperformance on our interest um, bearing accounts. Um, the main being uh, our investment interest. Uh, we are carrying a ton of cash because of the high school building project. Interest rates have gone a little wonky over the last year. In turn, we've seen a ton of interest um, revenues. We had budgeted for $200,000 in FY23, and we made just shy of $3 million. So that Whoa. that's about a $2.8 million nugget that was in there, um, which is unanticipated and frankly is probably temporary. Um, given the interest rates that we're seeing right now and the fact that we have a lot of money in the bank because of our high school project. Um, also, um, we had, we carried a number of vacancies both on the town and school side. It's very difficult to hire people right now. The labor market's impossible. Um, so any of those vacancies that were budgeted that we're trying to hire for, couldn't that money closes to free cash as well. Um, uh, additionally, um, we had a couple other local receipts come in higher than anticipated. Um, that is sort of part of the hallmark of our conservative local receipts budgeting. Um, we budget conservatively knowing that we will likely beat our revenue targets um, and that's built into sort of our plan. So on, if I may have a follow on. So on the, on the, uh, the interest income, uh, doesn't the federal government prohibit arbitrage like that on the part of municipalities? Uh, Hmm. I don't know that it does. Um, I don't have a good answer for you or on the that. State. I, I recall uh, multiple years ago that the, that the town had to give money back or something like that when it was discovered that we were uh, in the in the money market game. You know? Yeah, my understanding on the arbitrage is that it will arbitrage will kick in if we have borrowed for a specific purpose and we do not spend for that specific purpose within two years of borrowing. Um, we are cash flowing properly on the high school project. And so this money, it's not like we borrowed it to park it in the bank to earn interest. It's part of our normal sort of cash flow projections at the beginning of the project. And, and you know, it's a $250 million project. So we carry cash flows to get us through to our next anticipated borrowing, which we do annually. Um, and we have another scheduled borrowing in February, which will be having a ratings call coming up very soon. So um, we're not over borrowing to invest the money or anything like that. The money, uh, this is sort of, this is a byproduct. Uh, it sort of happened without uh, planning for it. And in a sense, it's a blessing in disguise, but uh, it's a good 
good. Obviously, it's good to yeah. make all this money. Yeah. Annie, are we going to see the reverse happen when you do your next borrowing? Are we going to be paying higher interest rates than we normally do? Yeah, we'll borrow at a slightly higher interest rate than we had in the past. Um, but, um, you know, we anticipate a very strong bond rating. We'll have access to the best, to the cheapest money that we feasibly could have access to. Um, we won't borrow more than we need to fund the project. How, how's our new growth running compared to budget? New growth came in um, about 17% over our budgeted number last year. So we anticipated a million dollars. Just Friday was certified, was, um, was, our, our finally baked number is um, $177,000 over that one. Okay. Any other questions? John? Yeah, um, <clears throat> regarding the override, uh, you know, as I understand it, that was, I think it's referred to as a single question override. It said, you know, will the town, will the voters approve $7 million towards the operating budget? Right. Um, so I was just maybe just looking for a little bit of clarification on on these appropriations to the school committee. I mean, to the school's budget. Like, where do they exist? Are, are they official, or will they not be official? Um, when do they become official? When, like, because I hear right. you talk about you know seventeen million dollar budget deficits a couple right. years from now. You know, should those be reconsidered, or, or are they already locked in? Those are well, in a sense, they're locked in via the commitments that the select board makes in anticipation of pursuing the override. And so the select board makes a series of commitments where they're going to fund these certain programs with this much money. They'll seed them in these different years as part of the override. And so um, that is where those get baked into sort of our projections and the sort of the long range plan for the schools and also the town will benefit from that. And FY25 should have passed. So just to confirm, so it sounds like the selectmen approved the additional funding. But is that the proper procedure? I'm just, you know, like generally, is that how it goes? The select when approves right. funding for the schools. Mm -hmm. Generally, well, generally the school committee develops the budget, but the yeah. um, the select board it needs to be who sponsors a ballot question like this. Um, so, so I, and I'm sorry to interrupt. But so I understand that the selectman approves this the seven million dollar override. You know, and I know that's very official. It says, you know, we approve the voters to come and vote on whether or not, you know, they're going to pay an additional $7 million of taxes. So that's perfectly crystal clear in my head. The the funding for the school, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure out. So, right. Yeah, um, I, I, I think it, traditionally when the town does overrides, the select board but traditionally makes these, these I mean, commitments. I don't know if they're really traditional. Politically to uh, yeah. put yeah. before the... The, the voters. That this is this is how this is the money we're going to raise. This is how it's going to be spent. Um, right. Alan. So traditional. Well, the, the the money has to be appropriated in the normal way. Thank you. Okay. Thank through, you. Yeah. Through finance committee and then town meetings. Right. Uh, yeah. The Department of Revenue has taken the position that the first year you're bound by what you have told the people. Uh, legally. Year two and on, you you do what you wish. But you're at least bound, you know. If if the override uh, says we're going to spend X for schools and Y for town, then the first year you're legally bound by that. Yep. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alan. Sorry. Okay. Right. And I, I just wonder, maybe I'm wrong, and I, you know, I'm still somewhat new here, is because I do see that there are such things as contingent overrides, and there's also things where like you can have an override for a specific fire truck, right? And you say, you know, will the voters pay for this fire truck? I don't think that this was a contingent override, and I don't think this was an override where we are paying for like a fire truck. Right. This is an operating override, so yeah. this adds seven million dollars to the base, to Just the base stop. level. So, full like, we stop. have a we've got a new high water mark, right? Yeah. How that is spent, um, commitments have been made at different various boards, yeah. um, like the select board being the main one to fund it in a certain specific way. So, like Al said. Um, in out years, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Like, we could get hit by a comet, and then like things are going to change. But yeah. uh, that is the plan for this money. The plan, okay. Right. Okay, I'm just trying right. to follow the you know the legalities of it. But right. Thank you. That was mm -hmm. great. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Hello, Jones. Okay, just a, a quick point of word to confirm that I missed something. The uh, hand vote was to reconsider, and the roll call was to confirm the no action. Okay. The hand vote was to reconsider and move the no no action on Article Two. The roll call was a no action. 
Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't. One, one vote embodying oh. both. Okay, reconsider just, and for no action. I just want to make sure we're good with that. Just as long as we have you here, what's the um, difference in how much we got in Chapter 70 money from what we were projecting? I don't know offhand. Okay. Um, I don't think that it was much different okay. in, in 23 and I don't anticipate, I mean, those, the state budgets, but once they have a wholly baked number, like that's basically what you get. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Caroline. Um, what percentage were we giving towards schools versus the, the town budget? Uh, Either percentage or so numbers. out of the, so, so I can give you a number as a ratio. So $600,000 was, out of the, the total of the override was for the town and then the schools were all the all other nice. different and, and the, the the town money is programmed into fy25 and we are right now we are in FY we're in fy24 FY FY currently okay all right we will have to wrap it up so that we can be at star town meeting does anyone have any more questions one quick one what what are the other two areas that you said are increasing your revenue? Um, okay, so. Um, are we finished with votes and actions? Yes, we are. Right. Um, investments, vacancies. Oh, we also had, so the reserve fund that you guys managed, we had a very light winter last year that we all went through. Yeah. Um, so uh, nearly all of that money closed the free cash as well. Um, that money traditionally has been spent, you know, to cover winter deficits. Um, also, school enrollment for FY25 has projected to, to, de to increase at a slower pace than it had been previously. We had carried 42 additional students in FY25, and that number is likely to be somewhere between zero and 10 now. So in the plan, we're carrying 10 as sort of a, a, a likely worst case scenario at this point, but that moved the needle to the tune of about 300K also. So less than growth in the school budget. That's a decrease in new growth to the in, school budget. Yeah, school, right, right. right. So, so what, and, and that, that ripples through four years. So that's right. a meaningful impact. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'll uh, hold off until we minutes for a future meeting. We won't be meeting on Thursday. Um, and I don't anticipate meeting to meet um, again, but we'll keep it posted. Okay, can I mention something on that? Yes. Yeah. I don't want to uh, jinx things. We likely won't be there, but there is a small glimmer of hope that we can consider the rain. We had some surprise um, movement in that negotiation. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Getting this out of the way would be nice, I think, but just, yep. just throwing that out on the radar. Okay. So that would be a reason that we would meet against the rain. It's doubtful, but it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor of adjourning? Bye. 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 Thank you for an official meeting.